Uh, hey, it's not your fault this time. It, it is, this is the first time that spilled green is not the green car driver's fault. I looked behind me and I have done something terrible. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. I usually start my mornings by coming to the fuel barrel and filling up the trailer with fuel. I usually don't fill it all the way up because I don't use 990 gallons in a day and I'm just gonna get more tomorrow. While I'm here, while that's filling, I check all the tires on the semi-trucks and then I check the oil and water in both of them and just do a quick visual inspection just to make sure they're ready to go for the day. We'll run over and do a quick look at the green cart. Had a beautiful sunrise this morning. Since we are done with the beans, I need to dump the auger out so I don't contaminate the corn with the beans left over in here. Kittens say hello this morning. They're all playing on the pumpkins. Oh, here's Pepper. Hey, Pepper. Good morning. Who's ready to go pick some corn? I'm very grateful every morning I get to walk out my front door and go to work. Good morning, everybody. Just starting the day off with a good old fashioned fill up. What happened, Grant? We just started going. We just started. Uh, that little issue with the uh, header height sensor, which this happens every year. Never good when electrical stuff comes out. Hmm. That is not great looking. I can see it uh, dangling in the gathering chains. You're an electrician, right, Grant? Farmer certified. Zip ties to the rescue. That should hold. Now this is fun harvest. Bean harvest is not fun. Corn harvest is much better. I went and got Lauren Ice Tractor and the grain cart. We have so we have two tractors and two grain carts out here. And Laura's on the combine, I'm in this grain cart. And we have a hired man in the other one. That is a full cart. Oh, it feels so good. Since I am the grain cart driver, I am also in charge of moving the pivot in this field. Laura's over there. And the pivot is just right over here. So I need to move it out of the way because it isn't standing corn. And I'll move it over there where it's already harvested. Since it's so windy outside, I'll explain it from here. So that's a V8 engine that we use to pump water on this field all summer. So we just unhook the drive shaft to the well and run the generator. So it's running 480 volts to the pivot. I looked behind me and I have done something terrible. The cords have been dragging. I wonder how long they've been dragging. Looks like they're not too... Oh, the plugs are even still there. Oh, that one's gone. Well, that was unexpected. We were just picking corn right along, and this rain kind of came out of nowhere. We were definitely going to have to pack up shop for today get everything back to the yard. It looks like it's gonna rain a lot, actually. Could have an inch.
combine doesn't fit in any of our buildings with the head and the big top on. We didn't have enough time to get it all folded down and taken off before this rain came up. Holy cow. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, there's some corn in that one. Do you guys see this beautiful rainbow? Oh, it's a double rainbow. Holy cow. So beautiful. And do you know what's at the end of every rainbow? It's a little known fact. It is a John Deere tractor. Sure glad we got this field finished today. A little greasy. So much rain came down so fast. I didn't think we'd be pulling out the Yankum rope for a second time this week. Thank goodness we had our friend Reed here. He was helping us move equipment from one field to the other. And hopefully he's gonna be able to pull us out. Really beautiful sunset after the storm. And the pickup is unstuck, thank goodness. Thanks, Reed. October 6th and we are on to our second cornfield. Grant, our first cornfield was the field by the interstate. You were able to finish harvesting it and then we added up all the scale tickets. So all the tickets from the semi trucks and trailers that brought the corn into the elevator. And how did our field end up yielding? Uh, about 225 bushels the acre, which is not ideal. I was hoping for a lot more, but when the dry land produces zero bushels the acre, I mean, it really drags the whole field average down. So if you take the field average out, it was, you know, it was about 260, 270. If you don't count the dry land corners? If you don't count the dry land. Gotcha. And then I think we have some plug lines on our drip side because only about half of the drip irrigation got water. Mm. And so that made even more land, dry land that was supposed to be that was really disappointing to see, but uh, something to fix next year. I was gonna say, so that'll be something we look into when we're going through and getting all of our pivots serviced. Looks like we're gonna have to go through and maybe get some service to the underground drip irrigation as well. And also, it was just so dry this year that I think the subsoil moisture was so depleted from last year's crop that I should have ran that drip irrigation earlier on in the season to build up that subsoil moisture. Definitely notes to take into next year. Hopefully we get some, uh, I'm hoping for a wet winter. I'm hoping for lots of snow. Not only so Grant can spend some time snowmobiling, which I know he wants to do, but also because our soil really relies on that moisture that we get from the snow. So I'm hoping for a lot of snow this winter and then maybe even some rain next year, who knows. If you're ever curious about why we have auto steer, it is for times like this, because I don't know how in the world you could tell what row you were supposed to be in. What happened, Grant? Well, now we're in some better corn, but two or how many, three nights ago, we had like heavy, heavy wind. Like, uh, 
75, 90 mile an hour wind, and it just pushed our corn over. Um, here you can see it's not as bad, but in some spots the field is completely flat. So it's not very much fun to combine this stuff because you have to go slow and you have to run the head so close to the ground. So you see why corn heads have those little pointy things on the front? That's for when conditions are like this, they can scoop the corn up, stand it up, and then it can go to the head properly. But no one wants to harvest corn like this. Luckily, we can pick it up and we don't have to put a corn reel on. We might have to later, but at this point, it's harvesting well enough. It's coming, you see all this, yeah, just picks it right up, comes in. It's still yielding fairly decent but I'm sure we're leaving a lot of ears on the ground that we just, just can't pick up. We have Gage driving green cart for us today. He always does such a nice job. Here's an outside view of what we're looking at. As you can see on the ground, the wind just blew the corn stalks right over. So the combine's picking up what it can, but there's just some stuff that it can't. See all this laid over down here? The ears just shatter when they blow over like that because it's so dry. The kernels just fall right off the cob. It's definitely better going this direction because the corn head can kind of scoop it up. But going this way, the way that the wind blew, there's really not much you can do at all. Maybe we'll find some cows to put out here rent the ground out for uh, them to feed on. They can go pick up all the extra corn left over. This dry land stuff. And it's really Here's dry land. Pretty obviously you can see where the pivot comes around. Really, there really wasn't anything to blow over here. But then as soon as you hit the irrigated stuff going this way, do you see how they are just bent over? So there's some chains, gathering chains, that kind of help bring the stalks into the head. But at the height they're at, they're just kind of shattering those ears to pieces. So we're just trying to pick up what we can. Luckily, the whole field isn't like this. Right below the chains, there's what they call stripper plates or deck plates, or just two plates like this that the ear gets pulled through, and the stalk gets pulled through, and then the ear hits it and knocks it off the gathering chains gather it and I can actually there's a little hydraulic cylinder under there that I can spread those apart but I have to find a balance between those small ears and pulling them together but then when I pull them together more leaves come with the combine and the combine does not like to eat a bunch of leaves and stalks it only likes to eat the corn so there's kind of a delicate balance between how much plant material are you bringing in versus how many ears are you saving Gage left for football practice. So I left Grant in the combine and I'm in the grain cart. I I guess he thought he was full. <laughs> he wanted to go to town right he now. He was ready to go to town. That's uh So our truck driver just decided to leave uh mid uh leave a bit prematurely. <laughs> I was not empty and not done. Ah, I guess that's why our all of our radios are dead today. And so we have no radio communication between anybody. So Grant and I have been doing <laughs> hand signals. What's the and, uh, signal for full? This is full. <laughs> that means you're like, crown it, go ahead. Um, but apparently me and the truck driver have not established well enough hand signals. Um, I thought that maybe the auger still being on was good enough, but <laughs> apparently not. Uh, hey, it's not your fault this time. It, it is, this is the first time that spilled grain is not the grain car driver's fault. I did see, are those some rows of shame, Grant? Uh, they are rows of shame. I had two rows of shame. Two rows. That's even worse than one.
we've made it more to the middle of the field and this stuff is bad. We're in fully irrigated. There's the pivot point right up there. And it is just flat. So depressing. There's the center point. Just following the combine down, making a new land. I know in this video, it looks like we jump around a lot. And that is because especially during harvest you rarely stay in the same place all day long and so we are constantly switching between combine driver vehicle person who runs around a grain cart operator someone to help trucks navigate you're just never in the same spot for very long so i hope it's not too confusing but grant and i are just constantly switching jobs uh and then also it's maybe i hope it wasn't too confusing but in this video i also included a couple different days because we had a couple rain delays so I hope that I'm, I'm trying to put out a lot of videos because I want you guys to fully understand harvest. So please comment any questions you might have, but this was just a couple days wrapped up in one. I appreciate you guys sticking around for the harvest journey. And I've been putting a lot of hard work into these videos and I hope you guys can appreciate that. We are on the road to 500,000 subscribers and I know a ton of you guys have subscribed. Already my subscriber metrics have jumped from, I usually have been gaining about five, 6,000, maybe 10,000 subscribers a month. And this past month it was 15,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So you guys are really helping me along for my goal of 500,000, half a million subscribers by the end of harvest. I think we can reach that. I am very grateful for you guys. I hope you know that. Thank you for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.